Starting lesson 3.1, parallel lines and transversals. Now a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines. Coplanar means they lie on the same plane. So what you're looking at the screen is a plane or the, the piece of paper is a plane. So here I have two lines. Okay. And I have this line that intersects both of them. This blue line is known as your transversal. Okay. So now there are four names given to pairs of angles formed by the intersection of two lines and a transversal. If the two lines being intersected by the transversal are parallel, this is a key idea, then the four angle pairs have special properties. Okay, so we're going to be using these properties very often, or identifying these special pairs of angles. All right, do, do, do. here we go. So corresponding angles is the first type of angles we'll be working with. Now, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are equal in measure. Now, what are the corresponding angles? All right, now, you're going to be focusing on two areas. This is the first area, area one. This is where all the angles are formed by one intersection. And this is the other area. All, right, all the angles formed by the other point of intersection. Okay. Now, we're going to be relating the angles from the two groups. So here are corresponding angles. This one's at the top left. So the corresponding angle from the other group would be the one at the top left, 5. So 1 and 5 are known as corresponding. All right, then here we have the top right. 2 and 6 are corresponding. Then we have 3 and 7 are corresponding. And then we have 4 and 8 are corresponding. All right, now, very important idea is that look at the shape of these angles, right? They would perfectly overlap if you put one over the other. So they're equal in measure. So measurement of angle 1 is equal to measurement of angle 5. I could also say that the angles are congruent. Now, a lot of students have been confused about the idea between congruence and equality. Let me reiterate the idea once again. Congruence has to do with shape, all right? So it's two objects that you can overlap perfectly, all right? Whereas equality has to do with numbers, okay? So you wouldn't see, um, like, x is congruent to 60 degrees. You would never see that because congruence doesn't have anything to do with numbers. It has everything to do with shape. You'd only see equals when you're working with numbers, okay? Now let's go on to uh, 2 and 6. Measure angle 2 is equal to measurement angle 6. All right, then you have measurement angle 3 is equal to measurement angle 7. And then you have measurement angle 4 is equal to measurement angle 8. Okay, so those are corresponding angles. They share the same position. All right, going on to the next type of angles. Alternate exterior. Okay, so... Once again, I'm working with angles from these two groups. All right, now, very important idea right now. The interior, when we use the word interior, we're talking about what lies in between the two parallel lines. Okay? And exterior is outside the parallel lines. That's where the exterior angles lie. So interior is between, exterior is outside. All right. Now, the alternate interior would be these angles. Here's angle 1. Well, looking over at the other angles, which would, would be the alternate exterior? Okay. Well, alternate means it lies on the other side of the transversal. So we move over to the right to 8. All right. Those are alternate exterior. So measurement of angle 1 is equal to measurement of angle 8. Then we have 2. All right, I'm going to look to the exterior on the, for the other group of angles. And what's on the alternate side, the other side of the transversal? It's 7. 
measurement, measurement of angle 2 equals measurement of angle 7. All right? Now, one very important idea is that because these lines are parallel, all right, only because these lines are parallel are these angle relationships having measures that are equal to each other, all right? Only because the lines are parallel. All right, now let's go on to alternate interior. All right, now we're looking once again at these two groups of angles. All right, and we're working on the interior now. So we're between the two parallel lines. So here we have three. And what would be alternate interior with angle three? That would be six, all right? It's on the other side of the transversal. So measurement angle three equals measurement angle six. Then we have four, all right? What's the other angle that's in the interior and is on the alternate side? That's five. So measure angle four equals measure angle five. All right, done with those. All right, so notice that all these angle measurements are equal. All right, now here's the exception. We're working with consecutive interior angles now. All right, so here I have this group and this group. All right, now here I have angle three. All right, now what angle from the other group would be consecutive interior? That would be angle five. Now look at the shape of these angles. This one is definitely obtuse. This one is definitely acute. Okay, so they're definitely not equal, all right? But here's the relationship. If the lines are parallel, then those angles are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. Alrighty. Then you have four and six. They're supplementary. All right. If there is blank for a pair of angles, then they are. All right. If there is no name for a particular pair of angles from the four that we're working with, then they are supplementary. Okay, now we have to state the name for the given pair of angles and their mathematical relationship. So we have three and five. Those are alternate interior and those angles are equal to each other. Then we have two and six. Two and six. Those angles are corresponding and they are equal to each other. Then we have four and five. Those angles are consecutive interior Uh, sorry, they're not equal. A lot of students do that. Watch out for that. Measure angle 4 plus measure angle 5 equals 180. Those angles are supplementary. And we have 1 and 3, which are simply vertical angles. All right, we're just working from that one group. So it's drawing on knowledge from the, the previous chapters. Then we have 1 and 7. One and seven. So this is alternate exterior. Then I measure angle one equals measure angle seven. Then I have seven and eight. These are like a linear pair. And they are supplementary. Then I have four and seven. Uh, there's no name for those pair of angles. And when, when there's no name between the two groups, then those are supplementary. All right. 
All right, now for example two, find the measure of the numbered angle. All right, well, what do we know about one and this angle? Those are alternate interior, so they're equal to each other. Okay, got that one, piece of cake. Now what do I know about these two? Those are consecutive interior. Okay, so they add up to 180, and measure angle two is 48 degrees. Next one, I have these two angles, which are alternate exterior. So measure angle three is equal to 82 degrees. And then I have these two, which are corresponding. And you could have just as well said that these are vertical and they're equal to each other. All right, and then we have these two angles. Measure angle one plus 63 is equal to 180. All right, so I'm subtracting 63, and measure angle one is equal to 117 because those are consecutive interior. Done. All right, so you should be really good at this point at identifying what types of angles you're working with. And once you're able to do that, you'll know if they're equal or if they add up to 180. All right, then you should be able to do the next type of problems. All right, well, this involves a little bit of algebra. All right, so these angles here are alternate exterior. And I have 2x is equal to 126. All right, since they're alternate exterior, they're equal to each other divided by 2, and x is equal to 63. For the next one, here I have these parallel lines. This is my transversal now. You could turn the page if you need to. And if I look at these two angles here, they are consecutive interior. All right, these were alternate exterior. These are consecutive interior, and so they add up to 180. So I have 3y plus 105 equals 180. Subtract 105, I get 75, divide by 2, and y is equal to, sorry, divide by 3 and y is equal to 25. All right, and the last problem, I have these angles here, which are alternate interior. So I have three times two x minus two is equal to 54. Then I distribute, and I get six x minus six equals 54. Add six, six x equals 60, divide by six, and x is equal to 10. And once again, those were alternate interior. All right, that's all there is to it. All right, so you have alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, those angles are equal to each other, and then you have consecutive interior, which are supplementary, and if there's no name, they're supplementary as well. All right, if you have any questions, please make sure to ask. Begin the assignment.